On this video, we're going to talk about this TV right here. This is the Hisense A7N. The biggest increase over the A6N is this feature right here. It's called Wide Color Gamut. Basically, it's going to have more colors than the A6N, and it's only a little bit more, but it is not a QLED. This is the US model and it's powered by Google TV, but if you live in some other countries, you might see VEDA operating system. And it has some great features like full array backlights, 120 hertz motion, as well as Gaming Plus and VRR support. It also supports Chromecast, Apple AirPlay and HomeKit, and it does have DTS sound and it works with Alexa. Today we'll be looking at the 43 inch, but keep in mind if you go with the 75 inch, it uses a IPS ADS panel for better viewing angles and better color reproductions. And I'm not sure what the panel is on the 85 inch. In the box, you're gonna get two feet. They're made out of plastic. You also get some screws, a power cord, remote control with the batteries, and a quick setup guide. Now this TV only has one way to mount it right there. You're also gonna find a 10 watt speaker on both sides. And over here in the center, there's a press button so you can turn the TV off and select some of the inputs. It's very easy to mount the feet. As you can see, there's a groove right there. You just want to put it on the TV and then you just want to screw it in. Now, this TV does have Wi-Fi built in, plus you have some old school connections for hooking up a DVD player and you do have a headphone jack that's on the back right there. And it does have a reset button just in case the TV locks up. There's three HDMI's, they're all 60 hertz, so it doesn't matter which one you plug your gaming console in. There's an eARC for your soundbar. There's two USB 2.0's, a TV tuner, a fiber optic output, and this one has a LAN connection for hooking up to your router directly. And this TV comes with a screen protector that you can pull off. You're gonna see a yellow tab right here in the corner. Satisfactory. So here's the remote control that comes with it. It is a voice activated remote control. You have hotkeys at the bottom. You also have your Google button right there, navigation keys. So you can have a lot of fun with this television with the Google operating system. This is the demo that Hisense set up and I'm pretty impressed so far. Now granted, the demos I'm gonna probably show you it's not gonna even compete with this because this is set up to give the TV the best resolution. But as you can see, the colors reproduction on this television looks pretty darn good. Just so you know, since I have Apple TV already set up, we're gonna be using this to go through the different picture profiles, but we're gonna check out some sporting events just to see how well it performs on your everyday TV content. One of the things I noticed on sports is that this TV is extremely accurate when it comes to color reproductions. Now, I'm not gonna say it's the perfect television, but so far, it looks like the whites look white, the orange looks great, and the grass looks green on this particular channel. And even switching over to tennis match, look how clean everything looks and the motion looks clean as well. So Hisense did a really good job with the wide color gamut and I can see it pan off because this TV looks really good so far. But keep in mind, this TV is not extremely bright. Now, this TV does have all type of picture profiles, so I switched it over to Vivid and it really gets bright considering that this TV is probably around 350, 400 nits of peak brightness. You have standard mode that takes a lot of the red out. You have energy savings that lowers the brightness quite a bit. We have gaming setting. We have the sports setting that makes it just a little bit brighter. And we have theater day mode that has that more natural look for it for movies. Now over here we have theater night mode which gets a lot darker. And this TV does have filmmakers mode. So basically if you have metadata, this filmmakers mode will kick in on some content so it will look the best it can based off of what the director wanted you to see. Now again, this is a 4K Apple TV and the great thing about using an external streamer versus the built-in apps is that you can override the system. So let's go ahead and put in Adobe Vision Mode and see what changes. Now one thing you get is that icon over in the corner which is pretty good. We'll go ahead and accept this. Another thing, if you decide to get a streamer, make sure you match the content. And what this will do is it will adjust from Adobe Vision to SDR automatically according to what you're playing so you won't have any problems whatsoever. Another thing I wanna point out is that this TV does support HDR10 Plus, and that's basically the same thing you get on Samsung TVs. So if you do have a smartphone from Samsung and you load files on a thumb drive, then you're gonna be able to get that HDR10 Plus performance. But we'll check that out in just a second. Now I have the TV in Dolby Vision mode, and this is Dolby Vision Bright. 
There also has a setting called Dolby Vision Dark, and then you have Dolby Vision Custom where you can adjust it yourself and choose the settings that you like. We also have Dolby Vision for gaming, and that's all the options for Dolby Vision in this television. Now let's check out the HDR10 Plus. And just so you know, HDR10 Plus and Dolby Vision are really built off the same concept. So if you get a Samsung TV that doesn't have Dolby Vision, it will have HDR10 Plus, which is equivalent. Now right here, we have the Vivid Mode. And as you can see now, it says HDR instead of Dolby Vision. And we have Standard Mode. We have Energy Savings. Game Mode. Sports Mode. And Theater Mode as well as the filmmakers mode. So you have pretty much the same settings that you get in your SDR mode on this television. And again, in my opinion, I think it has a pretty good picture. So let's turn off the lights and take a look here at the movie. And for me, it looks really good. You will get the little anamorphic uh, black bars at the top and bottom. The color reproduction is good. I mean, this is a budget television. So I think TVs are reaching an all time high for people who are not looking to buy mini LED or even OLED. And just remember that you're not spending a lot of money at the end of the day. Now we're gonna check out the gaming on this television. And first thing we're gonna do is check the input lag. Now I've already set up the TV for gaming. So let's take a look at what we get. And input lag, it's around 10.1 milliseconds and it's pretty stable around there. So it will fluctuate a little bit, but 10.1 is what I'm getting overall. With the Xbox loaded up, let's see what type of capabilities this TV has and it will support 4K all the way down to 720p, and it will support 1440p, and that's good. And we'll check, see if we can override it to get 120 hertz. Under TV details, you can see that it does not support 120 hertz, and this TV has everything else, including Dolby Vision Gaming. We go into video modes, and you can see it supports everything, including variable refresh rate, and I do recommend you leave it on gaming only, but you have Dolby Vision, auto low latency, what more could you ask for? Another feature this TV has, if you hit the menu on the remote control, you can then go over to where it says Game Zone. It's pretty basic, but you can see the information over to the side and you can move that around, but it doesn't have too many other settings. You do have black level control and you have white level control, but as far as I'm seeing, this TV does not have a game bar. Unfortunately, that's something I wish they put in it. And the last thing we're gonna check and see if we can get 120 hertz out of the 60 hertz panel. On the Xbox, you can just go in here and override the HDMI settings. Then we can change the resolution to 1440p. And now there's the option for 60 hertz, but some TVs, when you switch over to 120 hertz, it drops down to 1080p. Let's see what this one does. And that's good to know that it will support 1080p at 120 hertz, but keep in mind, this is a 60 hertz panel. Another thing to keep in mind, as you can see, it shows 120 hertz over there now. If you put it in this mode, you cannot select anything else. So you lose your auto low latency and you lose your variable refresh rate. So it might not be worth even playing around with. So the gaming on it looks really good. I mean, if you look at the skies right there, nice little tent to them. And this gaming mode works pretty good. Uh, over to the side, you can see 60 frames per second, Dolby Vision. VRR and auto low latency is on. For a starter TV, I don't think it performs that bad. Now I'm off angle, so I can't really see the screen as good. It is a VA panel, so you do lose the viewing angles. Now the thing about Dolby Vision Gaming, again, it's extremely dark. You might want to go into settings and crank it up or turn the Dolby Vision part of it off if uh, it's too dark for you. But if you got a nice dark room and you're playing some games, I think you're gonna be happy with it. Before we wrap up this video, I wanna show you how this TV performs in other ways when it comes to performance. Now I will tell you that it is not the inkiest black levels that you're gonna see on the television, but when it has a full picture like this, I think it looks really good. So here's the upscaling on this television, and keep in mind that this is a 480p signal that I stretched out to fit the screen for the demo purposes, but look how clear it is. I mean, I was expecting a lot of artifacts and things like that, and it's not really happening. And like I always say, 720p, 1080p is gonna be your sweet spot. So if you have any content that you're playing like that, you're gonna be just fine. So as we all know, 4K is the native resolution on this television. So if you're running content like that from Netflix, Hulu, Prime Video, any of those sources, you're gonna get a fantastic picture. I always say, if you're using IP TV or over-the-air content, it may not look as clear because 
a lot of that signal is reprocessed so you lose a lot of resolution but I get it, you might get a lot of free channels that you probably shouldn't be. Now, the thing is you can stretch out the picture with this picture size, but if it has black bars on the side, you will not be able to stretch it to the point where the black bars will disappear. When it comes to what they call DSE, that's dirty screen effect, you're gonna see some of the blotchy areas on this television if you're watching something that has a lot of black content on it. And depends on what you're watching, you might also notice some backlights coming in. Now keep in mind, TVs in this price range generally don't have local dimming zones, so if you need something with that capabilities, you wanna jump up to the Hisense U6N, U7N, or the U8N. And I really want you guys to see this motion test. Look how smooth this TV is. Now I've seen a lot of TVs that has jaggedy lines right here, right here on the top layer, but that is smooth as butter. So as you can see, the motion rate on this television is fantastic. And there's even a custom settings where you can control the judder as well as the blare reduction. So if you happen to get that soap opera look, you can go in here and you can play around with these settings so you can max it out to get the best picture quality. Now for the last part of this video is that I'm gonna show you, uh, so, here's a cut, oh wait. so here's a look at the skin tones with different ethnicities. And as you can see, it looks really good, even in vivid mode. I think standard mode is gonna be one of the formats you wanna use on an everyday basis because everything is gonna look a lot cooler and pretty natural to me overall. Now, if you switch over to sports mode, it gives it a little bit more blue hue to it. And when you go to theater night mode, it's gonna make the TV a little bit darker, but it still has that warm look to it. And again, we have filmmakers mode, but keep in mind the content that you watch, definitely is, that's gonna make a difference in how well it performs. Now let's take a listen to the speakers on it and I want to show you some of the different things you can do in here. First of all, you do have different sound modes. So it depends on what you're watching. You can increase the audio quality. I'm always going to recommend some type of sound bar or something like that. You have wall mount setup. You have advanced settings. And you do have lip sync as well as a built-in EQ if you need to customize everything. There's also an audio output. So if you do plan on hooking up to a sound bar, this will give you options for eARC, Bluetooth, and wiser speakers if you buy compatible models you can wirelessly send the TV transmission over to those speakers. And you can also adjust the headphones volume separately from the television, which is a cool feature as well. For the next few moments, sit quietly and experience the range of this TV's audio capabilities as we test the boundaries of sound. Mm. This is the end of the Tech Steve's audio test and transmission. The last thing we're gonna look at is glare. And as you can see, this TV doesn't have a great anti-glare coating. So if you have a lot of windows, lights in the room, you are gonna see them almost like a reflection of a mirror. Usually you see this spear type look on it if it does have a anti-glare coating. And this is a full circle. So just be aware of that on this particular TV. And I also want to show you the viewing angles on this VA panel and it actually did better than I expected. When I went off axis, you do get some coloration, but overall, I think it's gonna be okay putting above your fireplace. Six hours of footage condensed down to 13 easy digestible minutes of watch time. If you guys like these long form videos, let me know because I like shorts, but I'm not planning on making that my every day because I really start this channel to make long form content to give you guys tutorials on how to use things. And as you notice, I just don't rapid fire through all these videos. Now, what did I think about this A7N? Well, for everything that I tested out, the only thing that I would say that's negative, I wish it had a game bar. I wish the backlights were a little bit darker with some kind of, some form of local dimming, which this TV doesn't have. But other than that, has decent sound, has plenty of features, voice commands. I don't think you can go wrong if you are not scared of Hisense, which a lot of people are for some reason, but they're not the company they used to be. They definitely have stepped up to the game and a lot of people are using their products. Like I showed you the other day, I, the LG, the 7590 used the remote control for the Hisense, which is kind of interesting. With that being said, 
I think this TV is a go. If you're looking for those larger sizes, just be aware if you're going to go 85 inch and put it in your living room, it might need to be a dark room because you are going to get a lot of glare on that television. Other than that, I think it's is something that you might want to consider. Black Friday is right around the corner. If not, they always have it on sale. I'm Tech Steve. Thanks a lot for watching. I'm going to catch you guys on the next one. Peace.